Kathy Wood mentioned in her latest YouTube video release that she believes that Zoom is in deep value territory. Which on the surface does make sense since it's down almost 70% from its high of $559 on October 16th of 2020. And although I am becoming warmer on the name, as it is a company that I absolutely love, I'm still not convinced. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a free to download model on Zoom and you tell me in the comments what you think the valuation should be. So smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. You're watching more money, let's get it. Guys, every so often Kathy Woods comes out and releases a video, usually late on a Friday night, about her views on the economy and her investment. And I really appreciate that because although she and I don't agree on our investment philosophies, I really enjoy getting her insights. And I do believe that I am more pessimistic of my view of companies. So that's why I want you guys to download that model, change the inputs as you feel fit, and tell me in the comments what you believe the fair valuation of Zoom should be. Now where Kathy and I do agree, however, is on the economy and the state of the financial markets. Let me explain. People are calling the current valuations of the technology names worse than they were in the 1999 tech bubble. Even our hero, Charlie Munger, has come out and made that statement. And having lived through the tech bubble of the late 90s and learning about what the internet was from the news and school teachers, I can tell you that this is not at all what those days were. Investing got so mainstream back then that you'd have regular people invest in the markets in the morning and then check back at the end of the day with the expectation to see how much money they made in the day. It was almost memeable because the view was that stocks only went up in those days. I personally know people that were refinancing their houses to invest in the stock market back then. And I personally believe that today is not at all like those days. And you can hear Kathy was discussing just that with this clip. Uh, and they have likened what we're going through right now uh, to, uh, to the tech and telecom bubble and the bust. And so the algorithms uh, as well are basically looking at momentum and saying, once uh, the bubble pops, uh, that, that's what they're calling this, uh, you know, it doesn't stop, you know, it's 80, 90 percent. Uh, we think that that is um, a vestige of the tech and telecom bubble and bust. A lot of strategies started moving towards benchmark sensitivity because of the tech and telecom bubble and bust. And they really stopped focusing on true innovation, transformative innovation, disruptive innovation. Uh, so the, the gleam in the eye, the dream during the tech and telecom bubble, uh, investors were falling all over themselves to get the next deal and, uh, and, and to ride it you know, up hundreds of percent uh, within a few days. Uh, and of course, that was not real. I'm going to read you some of the companies that uh, went poof. Uh, from that time. Uh, these were the largest uh, dot-com busts. Pets.com, Webvan, eToys, Geocities, TheGlobe.com, uh, Go.com, Flues.com, DrCoop.com, and Cosman.com. Uh, dot, uh, many of these were out of business within a few years because they were being priced on nothing but eyeballs not just current eyeballs. Dr. Coop, for example, uh, averaged 1.4 million monthly average users or the equivalent thereof. And uh, it, it went public in June of 99 and was out of business in December of 01 uh, because the valuations uh, that people chased were simply based on eyeballs that might materialize and never did materialize. And although I will concede that there are some names in the technology space that are trading at insane valuations, and I'm sure you can name a few, a company like Zoom isn't at all one of those types of names. They have very real revenue and growth. Here's Kathy Wood discussing just that. Uh, we are nowhere near that situation now. Uh, the dreams back then for the internet was quite transformative and led to the cloud and artificial intelligence. Uh, we are living in the reality that that dream started. And uh, this reality has companies like uh, Teladoc and Zoom, just to give you a sense of the contrast here. You know, Teladoc has about $2 billion, uh, 2 billion in sales. Its revenues have gone up fourfold uh, since the beginning of the coronavirus. And we don't think that its revenues are going to go down. What we're seeing in the market is um, a focus on year-over-year -year momentum. 
And the, the comparison that we're going to see, and this is the last of the really tough comparisons, uh, Zoom's revenue uh, one year ago, fourth quarter, uh, was up 370%. And uh, in this fourth quarter, the quarter they will report uh, uh, soon, uh, we believe, and their guidance is, that that revenue will be up 19 to 20%. Think about that. Uh, on top of 370%, up 19 to 20%, and that's probably the low point of its growth rate. Uh, and we're going to accelerate, uh, we believe, or, or Zoom's uh, revenue growth is going to accelerate from there. So in that clip that you just saw, Kathy Wood gave the Q4 year-over-year -year growth estimates of around 20%, which is actually phenomenal. And when you look at their fiscal 2022 over their fiscal 2021, you can see here that revenue is expected to increase almost 54% based on management guidance for the final quarter of fiscal 2022. Kathy Woods believes that the year-over-year -year growth amount of 20% is a low comparator. And so in the future, she expects Zoom's growth rate to be higher than that. If I extrapolate that out and apply a 30% growth rate to the top line for the next five years and slap on a 25 times earnings multiple on that, you arrive at a fair valuation for Zoom at approximately $250 per share, which means that it's trading at 70% of its fair market value right now. And if you bring my discount rate down to 5%, you can see that in five years, if inflation remains at around that 5% area and Zoom continues to perform as modeled, the share price will return to that $325 per share area. And just an important note, and one that people may miss, is that the company does have excess capital on their balance sheet, which I've added to the valuation on a per share basis. Now, the way that I'm valuing the name is much different. I do think that they should have a good fiscal 2023 and fiscal 2024, for top line growth, but I also think that growth acts like an anchor and will begin to slow subsequent to that, which you can see here that I've built into the model. And with that, you can see that I'm valuing the company exactly where it's currently trading at, at approximately $171 per share. So it's not expensive at all at the moment, but I would require at least a 35% margin of safety on this name. So I'll become very, very interested at under $115 per share. And you guys already know, I checked the one year cash secured put yield, it's only 9.5%, which is okay, but it does not meet my long dated cash secured put minimum yield threshold of 25% annualized. So I'll just be sitting on the sidelines and watching this one and hopefully it comes down, you never know. I'm very interested in remote services. I think Kathy Woods is right here that companies like Teladoc are incredibly important to society. And so I will be valuing that name very, very soon. It also runs in line with my belief that in the future, the cloud is gonna be more and more important, which is why I absolutely love Alibaba. And with that, I'll remind you that if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do my absolute best to bring you non-hype research focused content and with your subscription YouTube extends the reach of the channel which allows me to help more people. And if you haven't done so already shoot me a quick email if you're interested in taking my free live introduction to the financial statement modeling course which we all will do on a Zoom call. And like I said before there's no selling here the course is absolutely free. If you wanted to contribute to the channel the Patreon is right here. Get on a call with me every month we do a ton of valuation work on a lot of companies. And and of course, I'm doing the course for free because I've been blown away with how much love and support that I've been getting on this channel. And it's my way of saying thank you and giving back to you. You guys already know what my mission is with this channel, which is to help a thousand people achieve financial independence much sooner. Now, Kathy Woods in that video did discuss the Evergrande situation. And like myself, she is getting more and more concerned with the potential of a real estate market collapse in China. If you are not up to speed with what's happening there, lucky for you, I've made a four part series going over that whole Evergrande situation, which you can grab right here.